Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Igor Atabekov and I am a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we are discussing the next topic from the, our playlist of complementary adjunctive additional methods of cancer treatment uh, that can help in uh, fighting this disease. Uh, and this is high dose vitamin C. Let's get started. So today we will discuss the functions of vitamin C the mechanism of action of vitamin C in cancer, in tumors, preclinical trials in cells and mice, about vitamin C in terminal patients who can't um, survive any chemotherapy or radiation therapy or surgery, uh, about safety and toxicity of high doses of vitamin C, about uh, vitamin C as the only treatment of cancer in monotherapy, about the combination with chemotherapy drugs, and uh, we will discuss the contraindications and side effects of vitamin C. So, more and more research tells us that vitamin C may be a good potential anti-cancer agent that can be administered intravenously and in high doses to be effective. Um, early phase clinical trials showed that it's uh, quite safe uh, and uh, it's quite efficacious in eradicating tumors and helping to fight tumors, helping um, to increase effectiveness of chemotherapy drugs, for example. And uh, vitamin C is a vo water-soluble vitamin that is very essential for our body. It is antioxidant. By the way, in tumors, it's pro-oxidant. It increases the production of free radicals. Uh, depleting the antioxidant reserves of tumor and afterwards damaging it and killing it. And um, it's a cofactor for many enzymatic reactions, uh, so it's needed for work and uh, life of our cells. Uh, it's needed to synthesize collagen, because collagen is uh, the frames of our um, bones, internal organs, cartilages, skin, and um, the tumors, they will dissolve, they will block production of collagen so they can spread, they can uh, grow, they can metastasize. And uh, vitamin C is needed to increase the collagen synthesis and keep the tumor in the place. Then um, it's needed for iron absorption, for example. It is needed for immunity. Uh, we know that it accum accumulates in high concentrations in immune cells. And cancer patients are often depleted in vitamin C. The concept of using vitamin C as the agent against cancer was introduced uh, more than almost uh, 50 years ago by the double Nobel uh, Prize winner, the chemist uh, Linus Pauling, and uh, his assistant physician Ewan Cameron. Uh, they published a few case reports, uh, clinical reports, uh, that indicated that uh, the terminal cancer patients survived unexpectedly long after vitamin C um, intravenous uh, infusion for 10 days and then they took um, their per oral vitamin C afterwards. By the way, afterwards uh, there were some trials uh, trying to use just per oral, just tablet of vitamin C and they didn't show any effect because uh, maximally achieved concentration after oral was 75 times lower than after intravenous uh, infusion of vitamin C. So after oral uh, intake, we just can't achieve the needed concentrations. Several phase one and few phase two clinical trials reported high tolerability, safety, and uh, reduced chemotherapy related side effects. Okay, high dose vitamin C is a single agent. Preclinical studies overall show that it impaired tumor growth and metastasis. In clinical studies, uh, what can we say about monotherapy? You can see here, monotherapy, what cancer, what are the doses? And in general, there was no real anti-tumor response, um, maybe because of the low doses. Uh, because in future, when we continue discussing, uh, we will understand that we need much higher doses. It must be uh, at least 1.5 to 2 grams per kilo of body weight, 
or at least 75 grams and it must be infused intravenously and at least three times a week and at least eight weeks in order to be effective. And a number of really promising case reports were published. You can see the authors, the names, if you wish, you can find them in PubMed. They showed unexpectedly long survival time and uh, in some cases uh, even full tumor regression in uh, metastatic advanced disease. In future studies, it would be necessary to understand, to do molecular profiling, to understand why these patients reacted so well to treatment with vitamin C. So we can understand better the mechanism, we can understand better who really needs this. Talking about um, vitamin C in terminal patients, the patients who can't already survive any chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and uh, in palliative care, high doses of vitamin C were really well tolerated, and uh, they helped to relieve pain, even bone pain after bone in bone metastasis. Uh, it uh, improved uh, patients' uh, quality of life, it um, improved appetite, fatigue, depression, sleep disorders, and these are the doses used in uh, these uh, trials. Talking about combination, um, you, combination therapies, using it with chemotherapy or targeted therapy or with immune therapy. There are 71 investigations preclinical and 57 clinical. If uh, we talk about preclinical, uh, in general, it increased effectiveness of uh, chemo drugs, decreased their toxicity, uh, increased uh, their um, sensitivity of tumor to radiation th therapy, and uh, in uh, cells in laboratory, it showed that vitamin C could even kill the cancer stem cells, which is very important in order to get fully healed. This is a table with preclinical studies. You can see here the drug, chemotherapy drug or targeted drug or immune therapy. You can see which kind of cancer, pancreatic, colorectal, gastric, lymphoma, breast cancer, bladder cancer, uh, leukemia, etc. And you can see this is all the table, continued table. Continued table, continued, and everywhere you can see synergy, enhanced uh, efficacy of chemo drug, and uh, very interesting uh, in the combination of vitamin C with immune therapy, because uh, vitamin C can really um, potentially turn cold tumors into hot tumors, uh, increasing their effectiveness of traditional immune therapy. Talking about clinical studies of vitamin C in combination treatment, you can see the table 2. For example, interesting results in uh, small uh, non-small cell lung cancer, in ovarian cancer, where it showed their uh, increased disease control, better uh, response to chemotherapy, uh, better survival. This is their continuation of table in pancreatic cancer, for example. But all are phase one, phase two. Uh, they saw that uh, the toxicity was um, occurring as, uh, less, less frequently. For example, less fatigue, less uh, nausea, less thrombocytopenia, uh, increased uh, survival, uh, more effective chemotherapy. And there is even one phase three clinical trial in China. They are enrolling 400 patients with that will receive uh, vitamin C plus chemotherapy or just chemotherapy standard treatment and they will compare if vitamin C increases, improves the effectiveness. And it's very interesting that uh, vitamin C is potentially very effective in patients who have the mutations, KRAS, RAS, BRAF mutations, metastatic tumors, and uh, these tumors are really hard to treat. That's why if vitamin C really works, it will be a great opportunity for those patients. And they are recruiting uh, patients for phase 2 trials also, for pancreatic cancer, for prostate, lungs, gastric cancer, lymphoma, colon cancer, uh, liver and bladder cancers. You can see the continuation of this table with the trials. If you want to um, study it more, you can see the article. I will leave the link 
and these are adverse reactions reported. The most common, common is hypokalemia, uh, so you must monitor levels of calcium in these patients or potassium of these patients and give potassium containing uh, medicines uh, if necessary. Uh, the levels of uh, sodium may fall a little bit. There can be some arterial hypertension. There can be hemolytic anemia in patients with G6PD deficiency. So you should always um, screen for these conditions before treating those patients. And there were some few reports of oxalate stones in patients who have some history of oxalate stones before. So whether it's really connected or not, we don't know, but better to monitor for um, kidney health. So to do the conclusion, doses must be minimum three times a week. Approximately, you see one and a half, two and two gram per kilo or my minimum 75 grams intravenously for eight weeks. And uh, some mutations may be very sensitive to vitamin C. For example, KRAS, BRAF mutant tumors, or these mutations that can be seen often in a central neural system tumors, especially glioma and glioblastoma, and can, can be seen also in uh, acute myeloleukemia, and um, it can significantly increase the effectiveness of immune therapy, turning cold tumors into hot tumors, especially if there is a low PD-1, PDL one um, expression in tumors. Those patients who do this test, they know uh, they did this test and uh, they had got the results about PD-1, PDL one um, about these mutations, kras braf mutations. Also, adverse reactions are quite rare. We need to monitor potassium levels, kidney function, presence of stones, and check for G6PD deficiency. And uh, it can help to alleviate symptoms in terminal patients, including pain. Thank you for your attention. God bless you. Bye-bye.